Hey everybody, it's Chelsea here at The Raw Dahlia and today I wanted to take a minute and show you some of my favorite recipes. We are going to make two different types of elixirs. One is a traditional elixir which has an alcohol and honey base. I'm using um, vodka and the other is called an oxymel which is vinegar and honey base. Both are sort of more palatable versions of a traditional tincture which is primarily entirely alcohol and your herb material or a little bit of distilled water and alcohol with your herb material. So the things that we make tinctures in, whether it's the vinegar, honey, water, alcohol, they're called menstruums and they are the liquid that we use to sort of macerate and break down the herbs and extract different properties. Each one pulls out different parts of a plant. One of the things that I like about elixirs and oxymels is that both the vinegar and the alcohol work as a preservative, but we can still put in a little bit of water. So we've got something that's pretty strong like the vinegar or the alcohol breaking down and pulling out those plant parts. We have the water pulling out what it's able to pull out of plants, same with the honey. So today, the two that I will be showing you how to make um, are a, sort of a memory, attention, and focus elixir. It's got uh, rosemary, sage, and lemon balm. And I'll have a link for a study about the cognitive benefits it provides down below. This is one that is, like I said, very good for focusing when you need to study for a test or maybe you're doing a presentation at work. It's pretty calming while also helping you stay focused. So this is one that I use when I have to make videos because I hate making videos. You can ask my husband, my mom, my kids. I, I have pretty bad stage fright. This is my uh, eighth attempt of making this video. So this is something that I use to stay focused but also calm. The second one, um, and this will be our oxymel. The second one that I'll be making is gonna be a rose and lavender um, elixir, which is very calming with the lavender, but rose is also known to sort of open the heart, open your emotions, helps you let go of things, be calm, but in an open and relaxed way. So this is the one that will be the traditional elixir. We'll be using a little bit of water, but mostly honey and vodka and equal parts. Both of the recipes I'll be using the folk method, which is pretty much how I make everything. There are more um, sort of concrete formulas that you can follow where you use ratios or you measure things out by weight. But the folk method is you're using parts. Now that can be a cup, it could be a tablespoon, and as long as every time you use the word part, it's the same measurement, you're good to go. So for the rose and lavender, I have used about a quarter cup as my part. And I have three parts rose to one part lavender. I'll use the same measurement as my part for the memory elixir, and I have three parts rosemary to two parts sage and two parts lemon balm. So, pretty easy and straightforward. I'm gonna have a sterilized glass container. I use mason jars, hands are clean, and I've already garbled my herbs. And to garble means that we've gone through and sifted out any debris that we don't want in our tincture. So we're going to scoop into the jar our herbs. This one smells really good, but it also smells a little bit like Thanksgiving. Get the last little bit here. Set that out of the way. And since this is the oxymel, I'm going to start by filling about half the jar with vinegar. Now this is a raw and unfiltered uh, vinegar with the mother. It's one of my favorite types to use. We'll fill it up about halfway. You'll start to see that the herbs kind of start to expand and soak up the vinegar. They'll rise up a little bit in the jar. We're still going to aim for about half of the jar liquid, even if the herbs are higher than that. So there we are. And then we will top off the rest with honey. And the reason that I like to put in the vinegar first and the honey later is that honey is quite heavy comparatively and it will help to push down the herbs into the vinegar. So I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and settle. And then once it does that, I'll add a little bit more honey. Tap, get some air bubbles out it up a little bit more. And also in the first few days after you've made 
a tincture or an elixir, you notice that some of the plant material is coming to the top like that there, and is uncovered. You can add in more of whatever menstrual you use to top it off and keep everything submerged. The next part, you can use parchment paper. I like to use either wax paper or freezer paper since it's got a little bit of a waterproof type lining and cover it mainly because if you're using vinegar, which in an oxymel we are, or alcohol, it can kind of be corrosive. We don't want rust. Then we're just gonna screw it on. And then, especially since we've got the kind of thick, gooey honey, I wanna give everything a good mix here. So I'm gonna do this for a couple minutes, probably. And every couple of days, I wanna go and mix your tinctures or your elixirs. I grew up with a mom who was a simpler, which is a much older word than herbalist, and she taught me to uh, sing and dance with my tinctures, which I still do. Okay, now to get everything kind of mixed while I finish this video, I'm going to leave it upside down so that the honey can start to rise up to the top. And now we'll work on our traditional elixir with vodka and our lavender and rose. So, Scoop this in. Normally I like to have these in sort of a pitcher, like what I've got the honey in, because it's much easier to pour, but my children are using them for water toys outside because it's incredibly hot. We set up a little bit of a water amusement park in the back here. So, all right, last little bit there. Okay, and the same thing. This time we're going to start with our vodka, or you could use brandy, you can use um, rum. You want to make sure that it's a very high proof. This is grain alcohol, which I do like to cut with a little water since it's very strong. There's a, one school of thought that thinks grain alcohol is too strong. You can actually break down some of the properties of the herbs in a way that you don't want because it'll denature them. But um, I find that cutting it with a little water helps, but at least 80 proof or above in order to keep it from growing bacteria. Okay, we'll just top it off with honey. And over the next few days, as this starts to kind of sink down and the plant material has absorbed the liquid, I will top off both of these with honey, just because there's a little bit less honey in each of these and I would like to keep it about 50-50 with the other liquid. The same process, I've got some freezer paper. Let's put it on nice and tight, and then we'll mix it. It's trying to mix there, but the honey's still pretty solid on the bottom. So I'm going to put this upside down just like I did the last one. It's back actually. And so, I won't leave them upside down the whole time, but I'll keep mixing while I talk. I'm gonna let these sit about four to six weeks to fully um, let the liquid kind of bring out the properties of the plants. And then what I'll do is I use a nut milk bag, you can use cheesecloth, and we will strain out and then squeeze out as much liquid as possible, and then just put it in tincture bottles. So, like I said, I'll leave some links down below um, about studies for the different herbs that I used, and I will do a video in the next um, week or so with some different tinctures that I have going and show you how to strain everything and get it bottled. So I hope that you found this helpful. I'd love to know if you try out um, an Osmel or Elixir recipe. You can leave uh, what you thought of it down below in the comments. Enjoy!